All right. So this is our audio check. And you've never seen the Star Wars. I just learned that Mike uh-huh. has never seen the Star Wars holiday special. No, I'm, I'm coming over there. We're going to I'm gonna show it to you. We can watch it on VHS. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can absolutely watch it on VHS. You want to just start the show? <clears throat> sure. Let's yeah. just start the show. Let's just start the show. No, I mean, we're talking about the Star Wars holiday special on VHS here. So I'm moving to the UK in less than a month. I'm going to bring this to you and we are going to, we are going to watch, we're going to watch it. Mike's never I'm seen excited. it. excited. No. It's so good. It's it looks good. It. It's a Father Christmas on the front. It's so bad. Oh yeah. yeah. That's all. It. Well, it's life day. Hi What's everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Star Citizen Live uh, VFX team Q and A, or perhaps uh, more appropriately, but Mike Snowden. VFX Q and A. Uh, joining us on the show this week, uh, Mike Snowden. Hey, Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on the show. I'm sorry. I'm what? sorry uh, because of scheduling, we couldn't get uh, more of your team on. But we appreciate you showing up uh, this week. Um, no problem. For folks who don't know, uh, you know, every show is somebody's first show, and if this is your first show, I'm sorry. Uh, who is Mike Snowden? I'm the VFX director here at CIG, so I, I basically run the, the VFX department as, to the best of my ability. You're also an avid uh, 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 vintage video game collector, as I can see. I am. You. Yes, I am indeed. Um, I'm not allowed any of this at home, so it has to it has to come with me to work. <laughs> you, you you are in very much the same boat I am, where where. All the stuff that I can't fit at home, I just bring to the office and use as part of part of my background. That's all being packed up right now, uh-huh. but uh, but yeah, it's it's you, you it, when I when I go to Mikey's desk and I'm in the UK, I instantly feel at home. I'm like, ah, yes, the geek nesting instinct. I understand it well. At least yours is all themed. At least yours is all like a consistent theme. Mine is all over the place. Yeah, I like to think that the real reason we're moving offices to a bigger place is so I can fit more more stuff i think that's the real reason i don't know it, it, it's the new office is, is going to be pretty swank it, it, it mm. might it might yeah it, it might have might affect the feng shui we'll have to see e- either way if, if if you can't for any reason you can come bring it to, to, to my studio space that we're, that we're <laughs> across, just just across the street all right what are we doing today we're talking vfx uh so if you're watching live on twitch.tv right now, uh, you can submit your questions with the word QUESTION in capital letters, surrounded by brackets. Uh, maybe I'll pick it, maybe I won't. Uh, make sure it's VFX related, uh, uh, because we're talking VFX today. If your question is, uh, 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 where Banu Merchantman, or, or or why Salvage, or whatnot, this isn't going to be the show. This is Mike Snowden, VFX, visual effects director uh we also put up a thread earlier in the week uh thank you christian from the community team for doing that and uh, collecting questions let's jump into those questions while the ones that uh come in live come um the emp effect has aged gracefully that's nice uh, but it's starting to show its age next to the mantis qed or the new engine effects any aspirations for a polish polish pass Polish pass, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, thank you for saying they've aged gracefully. They, they, they are quite old. <laughs> I, w- I would, I would agree that they are um, definitely in uh, a prime candidate for for an improvement, and especially because we have a lot of better options now with the, with the tool set that we've got. So we, we've we've kind of massively expanded our GPU particle system since we did the the EMP effect and lot, lots of effects actually as well. So yeah, absolutely, it would be it would be it is it is on the list to to be updated. Yeah. Hmm. What's it gonna look like? Ooh. Well, we'd have to go, we'd, have, we'd have to go through the pipeline, wouldn't we, Jared? So we'd have to we'd have to go go through the VFX concept in process, um, work out what we can and can't do, work out. If there's any kind of things that the designers need from it that that, that the current version doesn't offer, and uh, yeah, that, that's how we kind of define the look really, just taking all that into consideration and concepting. 
Gotcha. So, so it's a back to one kind of thing with it. Oh you yeah, know, creating yeah. a new effect. Yeah. It's not we just want, taking we want what's it. there and remastering it. Or... No, no, no. Starting again, really. I mean, to, to be to be honest, we didn't even have the effects concept back then when we when we did the AMP effects. So uh, we would definitely go through that that pipeline now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the news on a new quantum travel effect rework that that was mentioned back in uh, 2020? We have been talking about our desire to update quantum travel for a while now. Yeah, so I mean, the, our, our stance, well, our, our position on that is that we, it, it's not a purely VFX overhaul or rework. It, it's actually the, the whole thing itself. So the whole feature, um, in, including all, all the teams that that entails. So so the game code, um, I guess the ship designers. Um, so it's kind of like we, we know what we want to do. We've got some ideas about how we want to improve the visuals. Again, similar or the same answer to the EMP question. We've got a lot more cool tools now that we can use to, to make those effects a lot better. So yeah, one, once once that's in the schedule, once everyone's kind of aligned on that in the company, then that's when we'll we'll jump ahead. Again, we'll we'll concept that um, that as well. Yeah. Uh, from the live chat, Golden Triangles. Hi, Golden Triangles. Welcome back. Uh, in terms of budget, which is more expensive? a group of small dust particles or something like a lightning bolt? And are the effects built differently? Ooh, that's an interesting question. Um, I mean, the lightning bolt would, would... I can't. I can't. That, that's why I have, I have VFX programmers. Uh, I just look at pictures. Um, definitely the lightning would, would on its own be more expensive than, than dust particles, but it kind of depends on, on what cost we're looking at. So dust particles might actually... Um, I guess if we're talking about like dust motes, let's just say dust motes for argument's sake. The dust motes might be more expensive if we, for example, had a dust moat that it's essentially a sprite anyway. So it's a sprite based particle that's right up to the screen that might actually incur uh, more of an overdraw cost than the lightning bolt would. But really, the, the lightning bolt's always going to have a lot more cost associated with it there's going to be cpu costs because we actually need to know the positioning of the lightning bolt uh, for gameplay reasons to be able to damage uh, or, or or to interact with with players and vehicles and things like that so yeah that that would definitely uh, be the most expensive overall um mm -hmm. what was the other part of the question i forgot I don't already remember. oh are the effects <laughs> built differently yes they are built very differently they're actually um We've got like lightning effects are a, are a kind of a, a, a sort of a subset of the particle system. Um, so w without kind of sharing my screen and showing the, the, the fundamental differences, it's probably a little bit difficult for me to describe it. But yeah, dust, dust modes would, would be built in a much more simplistic way to, to the lightning, lightning regions, we call them actually. So yeah, very different. Okay. Uh, Jude Lux says, are we getting moister eyeballs yet? That's my main concern. Listen, Jude. No, no, no. Not, not, this one's for me. This one's for me, Mike. Listen, hold on. Where, where's my punching? There you go. Look at me. Look at me, Jude. We showcase everybody here at Star Citizen. That's my purpose. That's my passion. Remember? Remember when I did an hour with producers on how they made schedules? Remember when I brought the whole IT team in here? Because we showcase everybody, and that week we showcased the people who made moist eyeballs because they're essential and they're valuable and their contribution matters in the scope of all Star Citizen. I know you want to see everything all at once, but that's just not the way this place works. It's not the way the show works. But we'll cover it all. We'll get to it all at some point. But their contribution matters, and it's important, and I value it. So should you. And that's a word from Disco. I feel like I want to stand up and do a slow clap. <laughs> you know, someday, else. someday, someday, hold on, someday, I'm going to do a show with the HR people. Like, that's my threat. That's my threat to, 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 to marketing. Like, someday I'm going to do a show, show with HR. We're going to talk about how to build cover letters and, and, and how to get hired in the video game industry and everything. Like, I'm going to do everybody. Before my time here is done, we're showcasing everybody because that's my mission. Quite right, too. <laughs> we all play the role, don't we? Oh, I'm snarky today. Mike. Can you show us any ship tractor beam work in progress? <laughs> uh, can I? If you want to. Uh, am I allowed to? Seriously, am I allowed yeah. to? Yes, you are. Oh. You are absolutely allowed to show tractor beam work in progress. There's no secret there. I don't, I don't have any videos of the tractor beam. Well, describe Sorry. it to us. 
Uh, oh, do you know what? Maybe show the concept. So the so the well, basically the the, the ship tractor beam is the the tractor beam itself. Even the FPS one, we're, we're going to be improving because I'm going to give full disclosure. I'm not really a fan of the tractor beam as it looks. Mm-hmm. I think I'm allowed to say that. I hope I am because I just have. Be um, real, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, we went through kind of a few iterations with it, and yeah, just just to be completely honest, it just didn't quite end up. It kind of serves a purpose, and it's. I mean, it's a it's a really fun item. It's it's a fun actual game mechanic, but we know we can do better with the visuals. Um, basically, we we we've got some. Yeah, we've got some ideas on how we want to how we want to improve it. We've actually one thing that myself and Rob do. So Rob Rob is the my senior VFX concept artist. Mm-hmm. We kind of we work really closely together. There's lots of back and forth. Um, we talk about ideas. He's a great guy for like kind of adding logic to to ideas. So it's not it's never purely visual. We're always trying to think of how and why it would work. And obviously within the parameters of of making it fun and, and being in a sci-fi universe. Um, but yeah, we we kind of we looked at things like we look at things like sonic waves and things like that for the tractor beam, and we've got uh, we've got a new GPU particle refraction option now, which we didn't have before. That's relatively new in our toolkit. So I'd been playing around with using kind of a fully refractive beam effect, as it were. Um, yeah, sound patterns, sound waves, things like that. So it's work in progress. It's something that I'm actually doing on the, on the side, really, um, but. It's going to look a lot better. That's my promise. Mm-hmm. That's my pledge. And for folks like, shut, shut, shut. SEO is in the show where we normally show things. I put Mike on the spot there with the question. But uh, if we don't get it today, because he's got to sit here and ask questions, uh, I got a sprint report in two weeks. I'll see if I can't fit it in Ab- there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see. I, I, Jared, such and such. Yeah, I, when you first said it, I was thinking salvage. When you said when you said the question, I was thinking it said salvage. Um, next. We'll show that stuff next quarter. Okay, okay. Uh, do you plan to physicalize bomb shock waves? Uh, well, we, we do plan to because we have done. So the, the, the size 10 bomb that we released a patch ago, two patches ago, mm-hmm. um, that, that is physicalized, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, there's, there's so many cool backer videos when we, when we released that thing. I messed that up. I, I didn't read the rest of the question. <laughs> okay. It was on another line. Do you plan to physicalize bomb shock waves for rivers in water? Uh, ah, yes. Uh, yeah, um, we actually do. My bad. Um, I can't really kind of give hard details on, on on that whole thing, but we there's an expectation from Chris that that water interaction is is kind of realistic and and physical forces will will actually displace the water. Um, so that that is definitely on the to do list. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a follow-up uh, from the live chat, uh, 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 Lethal Nimrod, uh, sometimes the bombs on the A2 don't have explosion effects, which makes mobbing very sad and unrewarding. Is just a bug? Uh, obviously that's definitely, it's a bug. Yeah, that's just a bug. I mean, if they're not triggering, then, then we need to get on that and, and see what's going on there. Okay. So, yeah. I'll talk, to, I'll, I'll talk to Will Weissbaum. I'll get him on it. I'm going to write a post-it now. Make it up with it. Uh, let's see. Are there plans for ship trailing, like in Quantum, when inside a gas cloud? Yes, there are. So ship trailing, like in Quantum. So all of the, the the kind of effect that we've got, where it looks like the 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 ship is kind of displacing matter and causing a trail. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of the things that we. I think when we first were. We've talked about sign distance fields probably a million yeah. times, and we use it a lot, or we plan to use it a lot more. And that's the kind of thing that the sign distance fields would allow us to do. So we have, when we're in gas clouds, when we're in uh, volume, uh, planetary clouds as well, we have like template effects that are spawned from the cloud data. So I know that I know that we said don't talk about clouds. Uh, that's another team. The actual creation of the clouds is, is being done by by the art team and by uh, the code side is cast and mm-hmm. um, as I think Ali might have mentioned actually in his side star citizen but the VFX team work on like the interior effects for, for gas clouds and clouds so as part of that we, we think of it like templates so there's different types of clouds have a different set of effects like a different template for the VFX inside it and one of those um, 
categories of effects is is kind of uh, mist or matter, which depending on which kind of cloud you're in, going across the the um, the hull of the ship and and creating trails for for that reason. So yes, we, we plan to do that. Uh, the Gladius and the Redeemer engines are lit as AF. They are. Can you you can see them well before the ships are entering radar range? Is this intended, or will it be addressed and toned down? Yeah, this is an interesting one. So, so the Gladius, I I did some tests for for um, people were asking like design, were asking to be able to see them uh, like further away in the distance. So we obviously, as with anything in in, in the game, we have to kind of have logs with our particle effects. Mm -hmm. And I think what was happening was, yeah, I think like the actual thruster items themselves were getting getting loaded out, and the particles were getting loaded out. But from a point of view of readability for the player, that was that was problematic. So I did a test on the Gladius using uh, min pixel distance, so I can min pixel size, so I, I can force a particle to be like a minimum amount of pixels on the screen, and that can force it to draw further away than it than it otherwise would do. It would otherwise be cold. So um, it's still in testing phase, I guess. So it won't be. It's not been propagated across all ships. It might need to be changed depending on how design feel about it uh, longer term. So that's one of those examples where some of the ships have have have, have got this test applied to them, but not all the ships, because that wouldn't be practical to to do. So yeah, hopefully that answers the question. It's one of those things where because we are operating a live environment in the middle of our development, we have the opportunity to do that kind of A B testing yeah. and see see how it works in a practical environment and see what the majority of folks say there's actually another another question that says do you plan on making maneuvering thruster vfx more visible to see, better this is sell the thing, the ship movements? yeah 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 i mean i mean i can i can give a bit more about that question because i think that one i guess that there's always i've, I've seen a few questions on this i know it i know it's um, a talking point and has been discussed before but some of the maneuvering thrusters are kind of quite like physically small, so the actual effects right. themselves probably Quite don't small. convey the amount of power that, that that maneuvering thruster is putting out to keep the the, the ship afloat. Like when they're on uh, like places with gravity. One of the problems we've got is that we kind of take our cues from the physical thruster itself. So if the item itself is quite small, it's difficult for us to if we kind of oversize the actual effect that's that's going to look weird that that's probably not the intention of the uh, of like the people who created the, the look of the ship in the first place so we have to find that balance and there's there's a bit of back and forth it's it's a kind of thing that we we do have some um we do have the ability to kind of discuss that with the people making the ship so if we if we look at the ship and go you know what if, if, this would probably be better if we could make them maneuvering to just that little bit bigger that would give us give us a bit more uh, more scope to create a, a more uh, powerful looking effect then mm -hmm. that then that that conversation does happen so uh, yeah I, I think it's i think it's personally if i'm allowed to have a personal opinion i think of it's course. really cool when we can see those lights in the distance and it look you know it looks yeah. like a, a moving star and you have to be like you know you know what is that and, you know and, and then you know when they're in when the 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 idea being that you know when they're in the distance it, you know, it's one light like a formation. Then as you get cl closer, the one light becomes five lights. You know, as they mm. spread out, kind of thing. Yep. Like, oh yeah, shit! Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, I used my swear. My jar is not here. Um, let's talk about fire. A lot of questions about fire. Uh, uh, for for a while there, we were updating pretty regular regularly through uh -huh. the sprint report with fire and stuff. And then fire just seems to have gone cold. Uh, haven't seen fire in a while. Uh, 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 warm, our, warm our hands and our hearts, Mikey Snowden. Give us an update on fire. Did you just call me Mikey Snowden? Did, is that what I just did? I, I don't think know. so. I'm not sure. I'm clearly that's, that's in a mood I'm... right now. I'm clearly in a mood today. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think one that I've actually I've got some notes written down for fire because obviously there was a lot of questions about fire and understandable. Yeah. So it's quite it's quite a big feature and it's quite exciting, and there will be big gameplay implications. So we haven't stopped working on it at all. We've continued to work on it um, for yeah through since since the last time we spoke about it. We've we've been actively working on fire the whole time. Uh, but when I say we, it's been mostly code. So it's been uh, Leo, our uh, principal VFX programmer, who 
I always ask to do these things, by the way, but he was away today. He was on PTO. So even before I got a chance to ask it, he was like, before you ask, I'm on PTO. But he, he <laughs> very kindly wrote some notes down for me. But yeah, a, a lot of the work that, that Leo is doing now and has been doing in that time frame where you've not really seen much um, on Inside Starts as a citizen is just because it's kind of, it's the less glamorous side of it. So it's kind of more in the back end. Um, get in the fire so he's written here we're still working on getting fire integrated with different systems we're quite far along with that work and that what he means by that is kind of making sure it works correct with the room system making sure it's going to work correctly with with uh with with the player with characters with with, with the ai and things like that um so making sure it's like robust and actually triggers all the things that it should trigger so, so like room pressure warning systems uh, all that kind of thing um and, and much more complex stuff that, that I probably don't even understand as well. Okay. Uh, and, and to address the inevitable question, yep, there it is. Uh, is this all leading to a flamethrower at some point, to a personal flamethrower weapon? Yeah, probably. I'm pretty sure many. I've, in fact, yes, it definitely will, will lead to well, that. <laughs> we're going to commit the weapon content feature team to this right now. Uh, a, a creative video guy and the VFX director, we are committing the weapon content feature team to making a personal flamethrower. Uh, I wait to hear from Johnny Jasivius. Uh, I think it was him that asked for it. I should, I should just add. Um, will we get the, uh, the new dynamic landing dust for vehicles, but for water? We just put out a, a river thing. Gosh, was it yesterday? I don't know. I'm working in different weeks worth of shows. So, but but yeah. So then, all those really cool dynamic landing effects that we've added in recent patches uh, are the, are there was going to be continued, but for water. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, it goes it goes back to what we we talking about with the with bombs actually mm -hmm. displacing the water. It's all part of. We, uh, we kind of see it all as the same thing. We basically need to be able to have water bodies, water volumes that can can be interacted with. It can be displaced, and um, yeah, the ship the ship wakes or the vehicle wakes is probably one of the easier parts of that. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a follow up, uh, will dust like will dust like blown up from ships fall down on our helmets? and block or reduce our visibility at some point. If there's anything uh, the Star Citizen backers enjoy, it's reduced visibility. Like, like anything that can remotely reduce their visibility is, is, is a big win. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are. I was gonna say we are planning to do that. Have we yeah. really got some of that in? That's quite, we, we definitely plan on, on doing that. Um, it That all kind of ties into the work that we did, I guess, 2019 now with with getting the frost and, and slush and rain onto the visor it's it's all the same type of work where it's kind of yeah it's it's tied in with like how the how we get other layers um like visual layers onto the onto that visor and how do we get them to play together so it, it, it's definitely planned but there, there, there are quite a lot of complexities with it um one thing i don't know if this is relevant but one thing when we when we brought out the the tank we i think did we show this or talk about this we like the idea that of a physicalized shockwave being able to displace dust from the surface of of characters and vehicles mm -hmm. but but conversely we, we like the idea of being able to put dust onto players from like nearby impacts and things like that um so all of that is is definitely planned and and very doable we just need to coordinate with the other teams again. It's similar. It's the similar kind of thing where we we need to just work out how where the roles are there. Like who like we don't want to put the character artists under pressure to to kind of UV map all the like extra have extra UV maps and stuff on the visors. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I love that kind of thing. They're, they're the kind of effects that I really enjoy. Like that very interactive, immersive type of effect, dynamic. Uh, what's your mug say? My mug says, uh, "Aup." It's a, it's a Staffordshire, Staffordshire mug, and that that's a, that's how we greet each other. And what mouse is that? That's the Corsair Scimitar RGB MOBA yes, MMO it is. mouse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People asking me, well, uh, like, what what macros have I got mapped to the buttons one to, yeah. one to twelve? Yeah, yeah, I haven't got any. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, have you worked on VFX for waterfalls? Do we have waterfalls oh. yet? Maybe in, maybe in Squadron. I don't know. We have. I literally don't know. I'm asking. We have and we are. Okay. We're actually working on them right now. Caleb, uh, our principal VFX artist, just yesterday, in fact, was on a call with him where he showed me because he's in a different, uh, he's in Frankfurt. Uh, he started rendering out, he started doing a new simulation in Fume FX to, to have um, kind of like a, yeah, like more, more interest in waterfall visuals. So yeah, we're, we're actively working on that and it's looking pretty nice. And yes, before you ask, there will be treasure behind the waterfall. You can't make a game without it. It's a crime. It's, it, 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 it's a crime against yeah. the Geneva Gaming Convention of There's nothing more disappointing, is 1983. The, you, you, you see the waterfall, you know you've got to go through it, and there's nothing there. It's, it's very disappointing. Now I'm committing the uh, mission feature team to putting treasure behind the waterfall. <laughs> uh, real question from Garrett Wagner. Real question. Why do the VFX and Star Citizen look so stinking good? <laughs> Come on! Because we've got because we've got a great team, and we've got but also we've got we've got great um, leadership who kind of push us to uh, and allow us to to really go above and beyond to create create high quality effects, and I, for that I am very grateful. Uh, the flip side of that from Killer DJK. <laughs> These VFX are crap. No. Uh, will we get fine grained options with the new VFXs that come online so we can try to preserve FPS but still get uh, decent eye candy? Is yeah, yeah. This is something that I was actually talking to my leads about the other day and, and something I talk to Ali, Ali Brown um, of, often. Um, Min max settings, dynamic scalability to the particles, things like that. That's that's something that usually comes in once you've got the tool set kind of locked down more. So there's no more no more kind of feature requests for the particle system itself. That's when we then start to look at look making that that that, that toolkit or that particle system more more dynamically scalable, more robust. And you, you need to kind of look at actually what what is it that where do we where do we claw back that FPS or where are we actually using up that FPS? And we start to look at it. Uh, we got we got some really nice profiling tools actually with the particle system. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we want to do that. We we don't just want to kind of fry people's uh, graphics cards, um, which we don't do by the way. But um, yeah, uh, let's see. We're burning through the questions here. Uh, uh, Orion Star Hunter in the chat asks. Uh, uh, oh no. That's wrong. I'm sorry. Tone, uh, tone, toneful, toneful asks, will clothing and armor drip when emerging from water? <laughs> now, see, toneful drip is not a VFX thing. It's a it's it's the way in which you carry yourself and it's the way in which you maintain and curate the very clothing and armor uh, that you're referring to. Uh, it, drip does not come from external sources like water drip comes from within <laughs> do you need to elaborate on that <laughs> go ahead go ahead go ahead um will they drip water like when you get out when you get out of the river yeah. you're gonna drip, you're gonna drip um drip. i mean definitely definitely the 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 outfits and the characters need to kind of have that wetness so that again that will be something that that um I, I'd, I'd be talking to ali brown about and we'd be working with the the people like again like character all the people working on characters as well uh would they drip i, I don't know if we've got as far as like actually dripping sort of like if i had my arm up would it drip off me yeah. um yeah maybe. well 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 maybe well, maybe may, may, may you know you know tier two uh, 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 oh, tier, yeah. tier, tier, uh, tier that, that's all part of our new uh moist armor uh, uh feature set that we'll be discussing in <laughs> isc soon uh <laughs> I like that word moist. It's a good word. I hate that word moist. It's uh, although it is one of my two starter words in a uh, in Wordle. You start with you, you start with crane, and then you just second word is moist. And you, between those two, you've, you've got like all the major. <laughs> is that the secret? Oh, That's what I've been going all wrong all the majors. Yeah, 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 I'm still undefeated. Oh, approaching 100 games. I've been speaking English my whole life. Um, What will repaired material look like 
Will there be anything to differentiate it, differentiate it from standard unpainted materials, or will they be the same? So I'm being a little, little bit cheeky by answering this one because it's technically not something that my team will be in charge of in terms of how that looks. But I do know that we are not planning. We're basically planning on it to look to not look pristine. So you could never repair. Say there was like a, a logo or decal or decal on on your wing, um, and you you were repairing that wing. It wouldn't that decal wouldn't come back again. There would be like a kind of a, I, I don't know exactly, but it, it definitely would not look pristine because that wouldn't really make sense, would it? You know, how does that, how does that painted um, logo come back on? But that's just me as a VFX artist saying what I think I know. Yeah. Uh, there. Yeah, Zulu Foxtrot is asking about night vision. Uh, you'll want to check out our Q&A we just did with Ali Brown a couple weeks ago uh, for graphics engineering, as that's a graphics engineering question as opposed to a VFX question. He really um, knows his stuff, by the way, that guy. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, check that out. Uh, basically, the answer is at some point, but uh, he gets into more details there. Uh, are particle effects budgets shuffled around a lot? or are there large amounts of room for growth as VFX are developed? I remember when we were shown engine exhaust being transitioned from particle effects to shader effects. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the budgets change depending on... The budgets do change. I, I mean, the, the weird thing is I'm working on this game is like people get better quality graphics cards. Um, so it kind of it's very much tied to like the, the the hardware that you're working with or that you've got um but budgets do shift around we we kind of i guess i try and give like a more specific example so an example of the budget changing would be like if we were using cpu particles uh, like the older particle system that we've got that we had we would not be able to use as many individual particles so we'd have a low account limitation to us using the GPU particles. So absolutely, when once upon a time we only had CPU particles, the budget was a lot, lot lower. And once we moved towards GPU, the, the, the budget was higher because uh, it wasn't that we were taking a portion of the budget, but the, we, we just had a the count limit was 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 uh, uh, much more, much more, uh, much less limited for us. So yeah, the budget does shift around. I mean, it's it's weird when you're making a game as big as ours as well. It's really hard. It's not like a finite. You can't just get given like a budget from from again from Ali Brown. Like you can't just go, yeah, you can only <laughs> use this portion of the budget on this very specific thing because you've got no limitation on how many ships could be in in the vicinity as well. So you might you might kind of you work towards a budget for an individual effect, say the Gladius. Uh, maneuvering thruster but if there's like 10 20 gladius then that budget has shifted drastic dramatically and actually this ties in with the question about having dynamic scalability to to the particle system that's the kind of thing that where we need it to be dynamic we can't really make those in, those decisions when we're authoring the effects there's got to be some kind of dynamic element to the to the to the engine itself how it's deciding what to draw and what not to draw uh without kind of killing killing what it looks like to the player um so yeah uh, for those who uh, maybe haven't been watching the programs for as long as we've been making them now, uh, for a better part of a, almost a decade now, uh, when we talk about cost and budget and stuff like this, that this is a this is a resource allocation thing in the computer. It's everything you ask your computer to do slows it down just a little little tick. So we're always got to balance where we spend uh, those resources. It's not like a, a money thing or whatever. I just saw some stuff come up. Uh, why is your shelf? Why are your shelves uh, almost empty? Because I'm in the process of moving. I move. Uh, hoping to move exactly a month from today uh we'll see uh and then uh, jared is clearly a less is more person no jared is a more is more person <laughs> jared is definitely a more is more person uh they don't call me extra nothing for nothing um is the vfx team applying performance improvements such as multi-threaded impl uh, implementations, more GPU intensive, or not spending much time on these now. Looking for more visual fidelity first. All right, basically, they're asking if, uh, how, if you're working on performance improvements. Sorry, it got a little weird there when I copied over. I guess it's kind of a follow-on from from the yeah. um, from the other question, but 
Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, what was the question again? <laughs> Sorry, I just loaded my editor. From uh, uh, basically, basically, they're, they're. I guess, I guess they're asking: Are you? Do you work on optimizations? As you go, or is this something yeah. that you that you wait for at the end, kind of thing? So yeah. some things you have to kind of wait for at the end. Some things you can work on, you can optimize as you go. Some things, if you try to optimize as you go, you're just repeating work over and over again, and it's not very yeah, effective. Yeah. What's your case? Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's actually a really good question. So we we kind of optimize as we go. We have to we have to do that to an extent, and I'll, and I'll give you a reason why. Say I was working on a say I was working on the tractor beam and i was using a count of like a million particles for the for like a relatively short short effect uh it might look great it might get people might look at it and go yeah that looks fantastic show it show like show chris show the designers etc cetera, etc cetera. and they're like yeah yeah that's definitely what we're looking for we're, we're really happy with that yeah thank you that's great and then i start to then i actually optimize it to the point where i, I couldn't I couldn't really use a million parts. I could only use a thousand, and it doesn't any. It doesn't look like it did anymore for that reason. Then that's 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 a bad thing. There's no point kind of. You, you have to factor in rough budgets while you're making the thing all the way through the, the kind of lifetime of, of, of working on it. Otherwise, you're just setting unrealistic expectations. So it's kind of somewhere in the middle. You, you've always got it in your mind. You're always being sensible, but once you've got the, you do you do still need to have the freedom to get the effect looking as good as you know it needs to be or you know it can be uh, and then once you have done that that's when you will typically do in a, in a more linear fashion through a pipeline you will do a more a more kind of uh, full and final optimization pass um, just there's, there's all kinds of things like trying to trying to make it a uh, can you can you make the particles deterministic instead of non-deterministic, which will which will kind of be an incremental saving, things like that. So yeah, you're kind of somewhere in the middle. You, you're always thinking of the budget while you're working on the effect, but you will do a final optimization pass towards the end. Okay. Uh, There's a question in the chat. I'm going to rephrase it a little bit. Uh, it's common in some other games, uh, competitive games, to reduce the graphics and everything to, to, to lower standards so because it happens to reduce some of the VFX budgets usually. Uh, you, you, you end up removing smoke, you end up removing dust and other things that are designed to obscure your vision. Uh, uh, and you and so, in some games, not all games, but in some games it gives players a competitive advantage to bring all those things down and get rid of them. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Are, are, are you considering alternatives for that or, pre or preventative stuff from that well we, we talked earlier about being able to reduce the quality of vfx you know through sliders and so like this is do, yeah. do would you consider a mode that just eradicates them like they like there are in some games i don't I, I don't think our directive is is to be able i think we're, we don't want to give players competitive advantages by reducing graphics options i don't think that's kind of the ethos of, of star citizen um you know because that's just it, it, from my point of view as a VFX artist, I, I hate the idea that like the competitive gamers just won't ever have the effects on the screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we we need to find the balance. I mean, we all, we obviously don't want to be uh, crushing people's performance, but I, I wouldn't like the idea that we we're kind of forcing people to to hide the effects. Um, I just think that that's yeah, that's not really in the spirit of, of, of the game we're making. Yeah, I, I, we used to do we used to do stuff like that back in the uh, old Battlefield 1942 and Tribes Two days and stuff. Yeah. You used to be able to reduce the graphics to a point where you were basically playing on like lot five, and so yeah. and so and so the oh, player yeah, characters yeah. really stood out from yeah. from, from from the background. I mean, like you, you just need to know just need to know where the walls were. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm all I'm all for giving yourself a competitive advantage where you can where you can take <laughs> it. Like I used to play Counter Strike one point six, and I used to actually I had I draw like a dot in the middle of my screen. Um, not that it did me much good. I was never that good at it, but yeah, I understand where people are coming from with that. I miss Shazbot. Uh. Regarding fire plus salvage effects, a bit more gameplay related, but have you heard or had any work on potential hazards whilst salvaging? I always like a person who used the word whilst, uh, i.e. accidentally lasering a fuel line or causing a fire or explosion, anything like that. So this is ultimately like a design, a design decision. 
so mm-hmm. I'm what I, I'm just going to speculate, and and this is really again just me sort of thinking about this from a point of view. If that was a requirement, how would we deal with it uh, from the VFX point of view? I know it's been discussed. I know I, I've heard people talking about this in, in various conversations we've had not 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 too long ago. Um, it's how do you mark it up? I think is the is is the is the thing there. It, it's how complex does it need to be like we i know that there's certain ships in the with the damage shader where they've got kind of once you've once you've stripped away the damage sorry once you've stripped away the the top layer of the hull some of the ships and you can do that just when you shoot the ships with the damage shader as it is but that's kind of similar to what salvaging might be there are lots of pipes just in in the art itself so in the in the shader um that would be quite tricky to mark up i think from a point of view of having that pipe have gameplay implications. Um, so I don't personally think that it would make sense to go that detailed with it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that like the risk versus reward element of, of salvage gameplay, there's probably going to be things like that. Uh, I, again, I can't really, I can't clarify too much because it's a design question, but I, I, I know yeah. that that's in the mix. I know that's in the discussion. And if that needs to be done, like there's ways that we can um, have our effects spawn from, from them situations. Uh, any plans to create greater visual effects around ambient temperature on our ships or characters? A more heat waves of a hot ship, kind of stuff like that. Uh, hmm. What, just like sort of a little, little bit of little bit refractive? Yeah, you, you, you know that, you, that, 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 that shot from like Top Gun when the, when, 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 when the, yeah, when the yeah, ship yeah. You know, goes in front of the camera and you see all the, 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 the heat yeah. wave. In the distance. Yeah, do you know the funny thing is we we actually used to have that. We had like a heat haze with mm-hmm. the old planet effects, and I'm sure there were people who, who remember. And I think this has been called out by by some backers as not being in the new effects. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, we 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 got we've got like a new GPU. Refraction is really expensive. That that's what I should say. Like that's a really expensive overdraw transparency sorting. They're kind of they're real real kind of big thorny issues when you're working on VFX, just in game engines in general, to be fair. Um, so that could quickly become very expensive. But yeah, we do have a we have a better, potentially cheaper GPU refraction now. Um, so let's be honest, we're going to need to have that kind of hazy heat effect for fire anyway. So um, yeah, I think that it's feasible that once we've once we've solved it for that, we can start to look at it propagating in a more general uh, general circumstances. Uh, there's always an interesting uh, uh, phenomenon in Star Citizen fandom that you know, ostensibly we're we're an outer space game, but as we add uh, when we added planets, everything became about planets, and then when we went, went underground, it became about cave. You know, the questions is like the focus is for people. Uh, now that we're talking about rivers, there's a, a lot of questions about water and specifically underwater. Uh-huh. Um, with rivers and underwater content coming, what is the high level plan for underwater particle effects? Will we see haze, refractions like that, uh, suspended dirt particles, mud, clouds, or, sus- or suspended styrations? That's a good, I like saying suspended styrations. Yeah, Just but what like does it mean, Jared? I, I don't know. Maybe. I'm not, a, I'm not, I, 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 I'm not an underwater person. I'm going to, I'm going to write down on my post it suspended styrations i just like saying it though it's a great it's a great phrase it's a good alliteration um, yeah um kind of sounds like a i don't know some kind of ambient audio playlist um yeah yeah so uh, obviously rivers rivers are very exciting for, for, for the backers and for 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 the people here at cig there's going to be there's on toll and there's loads of potential once once we get them kind of propagating across all these locations when we get to to do the effect side of it because obviously as, as you know the, the first the first iteration is doesn't have effects in it um we're going to probably want all of that aren't we like, like it's the it, basically my, my my stance whenever people ask me about these kind of what will you be trying to do? It's always like, well, we'll try and make it as realistic as we can. We'll try and make it as dynamic as we can. That's that's the expect that's the expectation from yeah. from Chris at the top. Um, so we'll we'll need to, to deal with that when when we get it kind of scheduled in. So yeah, I mean, I think fog fog in underwater would would probably be more on the graphic side of things, or or 
the program is kind of working on on rivers and, and water bodies in general but then we could probably look at we're probably going to have to look at surface types for the actual the soil that, that layer at the, at the bottom of the rivers and you could probably going to want that to displace when when the player kind of uh, yeah displaces the the surface yeah. and maybe that needs to lead to kind of a more more misty look to it maybe we need to use space loop particles we'd probably approach it in a similar way that we do with gas cloud interiors so we might have like template effects depending on the type of water there's going to be more swampy water potentially again i'm just thinking future iterations by the way i'm not I'm not committing um to to like immediate uh, things here but yeah, yeah i guess all of that yeah play it players interacting with with all the kind of small little bits of particulate matter we can do all that with our screen space collision so why would we not yeah i think it's in it, this is a good opportunity to just talk about greater star citizen philosophy here for a bit uh our goal is always and we've, we've said this a lot take it to the point of realism bring it back to the point of fun uh but there's also another underlying consideration that that there are games that specialize in one particular aspect like people were bringing up hard space shipbreaker you know a game that's whose sole focus is salvage uh, or or a game like subnautica whose sole focus is underwater and it's like this it's we are a sandbox game you know so so our our, our, our focus is a bit broader than that stuff so it's 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 we always want to take these things as far as we can like that will always be our intention. That will always be our desire. The question is only ever how far is that before it begins to affect other aspects of our sandbox that are just as important, either in time, resources, like in the physical world or resources in the virtual world. Like this, it's it's always just a it's a question of how it fits in with everything else. It will always determine how far we take a thing. Our desire will always be to the absolute end. And we will, and I think we've proven over, over uh, what is now when we're now in our tenth year here, that we will always push things as far as we think they can go, and continue to push, continue to refine, continue to develop, and stuff like this. So, uh, it's it's a harder question to answer than uh, uh, than it seems. It's, it's we're going to do everything that we can within the sandbox universe that we are creating it's just always important to remember when managing your expectations yep. that there are dedicated games to that kind of stuff we are not that we are that we are the sandbox we, we are dedicated to a life in the persistent universe kind of thing so it's all those considerations have to be taken equally i think fire is a good example of that jared because we we, we already have, have been clear like the, the first iteration of that is is like interiors ve specifically vehicle interiors uh if if we just tried to just do fire full-on propagation for star citizen you're looking at like burning forests and um, yeah if our game was burn the universe <laughs> then then yes th then obviously yeah. you know at some point you could expect fire everything in the universe to be able to catch fire but because it is one aspect of our of our yeah. entire sandbox uh it will be limited but it will be limited after we push it as far as we can. So. Yep. I already asked that question. Why is this still on my screen? Um, will we be seeing lighting, lightning effects and other things in the gas cloud interiors? Uh, if uh, uh, And if so, what will they do to ships and people in and out of ships? Well, that last part's, again, a design question. So... We'll, yeah. we'll we'll just go with the visual. Will we be seeing lightning effects and other things in gas cloud interiors? Yeah, absolutely. We will. Um, we we obviously showed uh, which star citizen was it? Um, sorry, which citizen com was it? We showed like a, a a video that we did where we got lightning. The coil effects going on. In, in, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, that's absolutely that's absolutely what we we are doing. Or, or I was going to say we're going to be doing, but that's that's what we are doing. Um, can I say? anything about squadron 42 Probably yeah that's a, like i yeah. said uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and <laughs> so you, you oh you said coil sorry yeah, yeah the, the coil yeah the, uh, we showcased the coil back in our squadron 42 vertical slice uh, a couple years ago and if you if you, you can track that down on the youtube uh, if you haven't seen it uh you can see the process of navigating an enormous uh, gas cloud that has lightning and stuff then actual you know damages and effects to the ship as it goes through so yeah um we've actually we we've 
lightning's similar to kind of the, the, the process of, of working on the fire. So we got we get to a, we got to a point with the lightning where lots and lots of code work was done, lots of visual work was done. But then you get to a point where a lot of the work that then has to be done to kind of get this properly working in game is more again less glamorous. It's more in the back end. It's more kind of just making this thing work with systems and work work with networking and stuff. So we we do have the ability to the lightning regions. If, if you drop a lightning region in a level. And, and the, the the surface types are set up correctly in a level, then it will it will strike it will strike a player, it will strike a car, a, a vehicle. It's all networked as well. Uh, it will work. We can design. Uh, I've, I've got kind of full control over what the lightning actually does. We we've got it, or we had it killing people if it hits them, which you would probably expect. Um, but we got con there's a conductivity setting in the in the surface type setting so you can make it you can make a surface more conductive less conductive and then there's lots of interesting gameplay requirements for that uh, in terms of the actual spawning of the lightning within a gas cloud that's the interesting thing and I, I, again I, I probably said this already way back but we we've got the sdfs the gas we we, we create sdfs sign distance fields from the the gas cloud vdbs so we know that we can use that to spawn the lightning um, where it becomes a design conversation is do design want the lightning to spawn more regularly to prevent players going to certain areas of, of, of the gas cloud i.e the thicker the gas cloud becomes do you want the lightning spawning more regularly or do you want rather than it spawning more regularly would a designer maybe want just one much more powerful lightning bolt to strike the player? So all of these kind of things we can do. We, we take our instruction from design. We're always kind of trying to, uh, I've said this before, but the effects team, we, we kind of we, we kind of serve two masters, if that makes sense. We, we want to make it look as good as we can per the art direction, but we also need to make sure we're hitting the, the gameplay requirements um, from, from the design teams. So yeah. Hopefully that answers the question. Am I rambling? No. No. Okay. Not any worse than no I more than usual at least. Yeah. Um, VFX are traditionally uh, uh, downstream uh, uh, of, of a lot of things. Would you would you consider VFX a downstream team in a lot of aspects? Uh, I, I don't like that term, by the way. I'm not a fan, even though I use it myself. I prefer support team. Support um, team. But, yeah, downstream makes sense in, in, in as much as we typically can't do our work until other people the, have done the process has cascaded down. So yeah. that, that's where downstream comes from. But for okay. me, downstream kind of conjures images of like, I don't know, like the, the, the muddy bog at the end of the pretty stream, like with a discarded shopping trolley. So where the, I don't like to where, think of myself as where the suspended striations are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yes, we are. We are. Um, Along with audio, the, the lovely audio. Too. Yeah, uh, I, I bring that up because the, uh, one of the questions is what uh, what are you currently working on for Pyro? And I was wondering if oh. anything at this point, yet, or if, if Pyro has made it to you yet or not. I mean, it's made it to me via Ian um, with with lots of lots of requests. Hey Mike, hey Mike. <laughs> um, yeah, we have actually done quite. We have done some work, or well, quite a lot of work for Pyro. Uh, I've been in tons and tons of, of meetings where we've we've signed up to do more work. So obviously, this Pyro, Pyro, the, there's a lot that comes with Pyro. There's the actual um, gas clouds themselves. So hey, guess what? Lightning is going to be needed in in Pyro, Pyro gas clouds as as we've already shown. Um, but then it's just all the different locations that are in Pyro. There's all the planets. There's going to be different themes, different visual themes. We've done some, we've done some kind of preparation for for the different planetary effects for for the Pyro locations. Um, then there's just the actual landing zone. Well, the the actual rest stops and locations and things like that. Um, so yeah, so, some of the work's done. Lots of it is 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 ready to be done and, and kind of part of the part of the schedule. But we won't be, or because we are support team or downstream, we, we won't be as polished at the moment as some of the other teams are. Uh, I've seen lots of cool pyro stuff. Uh, any work on the? Uh, 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 most backers will know, but maybe a few don't. The dying star from Arena Commander is the. It was based on the Pyro system. Uh, have, have you done anything for the Dying Star in Pyro yet? The actual Dying Star, as opposed to the Arena Commander Dying Star. No. No. Short answer. Okay. I 
fishing, fishing. Um, I really hope fires will not burn indefinitely for the sake of gameplay. Well, I can tell you they're not going to burn indefinitely for the sake of performance. Um, a fire will only continue to burn while there is solid material or gases to fuel it, and where a fire is burning changes constantly. Will Star Citizen's fires behave dynamically like real-world fires? I am prepped for this question, uh, thanks to Leo again. So Leo's, Leo's lovely answer here is that for the full systemic fire in the PU, uh, it is modeled on real world fire behavior, so it does need fuel, oxygen, and heat. Uh, it will react accordingly if fuel or oxygen is missing. So, so to give an example, um, if there is no no fuel left, obviously the fire will stop burning. If 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 something if there's no oxygen in a room, so like if the safety systems kind of shut shut a room down, then the fire will stop burning, and it will it won't just switch off. We'll we'll have it kind of visually. Uh, looking correct for that and, and the player will be able to see what's going on through the visuals um, having said that we we can add infinite uh, resources for the fire and that's actually been requested through designers so the system itself is fully dynamic but the designers do and have requested the ability to have a fire that's like constantly spawning and an example would there and that's it wouldn't make sense if it was like a like a pile of logs or something that's burned forever but we can have a like a pipe say there's a fuel pipe that that's a good way that we could kind of allow design to build in some 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 kind of barriers or some some blockers or reasons not to go somewhere by just keeping that fuel burning constantly so yes and no i guess um we're almost done we've only got five minutes left uh, how does the effect culling in Star Citizen work? Can objects block or redirect smoke and other effects like building walls can? Yeah, so this was, this is interesting because the, the particles on their own don't really know, like there's no real concept of that. Just, just by, if I just place a, a big smoke effect in a room, nothing's going to stop that, that particle as it is from just kind of going outside the 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 room and certainly it's not going to react to the to the ceiling and, and crawl along it having said that if we're clever about it and again for fire we are going to be wanting to do this try not to commit overly to some of these sites but yeah but for <laughs> fire like we want we want smoke crawling along ceilings eventually that, that's something that we we aspire to be able to do that's just how you mark it up so maybe again we use side distance fields a lot. Maybe we have a similar kind of setup there. Um, I know we've, we've we've actually played around with that in some of our fire work so far. Um, vis areas, actual screen space collision on certain effects. It kind of depends on what the what the effect is, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, it's just depend. Again, it kind of depends what the game needs and what what designer asking for, what artists are asking for. We can absolutely make it do that, but it might be more complicated to get to get it to kind of look visually right. Um, yeah. As a sort of follow-up to that, t take take that back up into space. Uh, have you, has anyone considered applying the sign distance fields for effects related to entering and exiting gas clouds? It would be impressive to see a large ship emerge from the cloud bank and have the mist streaming off of its hull. Yeah, Chris wants that. So it's going to happen. Everybody wants that. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's, a, it's a great example of, <laughs> uh, it is a good example of, of like how we can use an SDF. Uh, it, it's it's a little bit tricky because the, the gas clouds themselves are, or the volumetric, the, the planetary clouds th themselves, they're not going to react. So it's not like we're going to kind of morph the the, the actual, the, the, the volumetric form itself. But if we if we do it with particles, which we'll try and do, we need to just make it kind of look like it's connected to the to the cloud. So uh, it's quite a tricky one to do. Um, we've already actually done some experiments with it. Try not to give away spoilers, but it's something that we've definitely kind of worked on visually. And uh, as I say, Chris Chris wants that. I understand why because it's a great idea. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's another another one that I'm sort of. <laughs> So, yep, yep, we're definitely time to do it. What? What's a backlog? Last question. What's a backlog? It's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, last question. Uh, uh, take us on a tour of what's behind you, starting with the Turtles Tournament Fighters. Well, 
put this here for you, Jared. It's 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 no it's no secret, but yeah. I was not uh, good at tur- tournament fires, but fires, well, you know, but I appreciated that it existed. Sixteen meg cart. It's amazing. Yeah, that, yeah. that's a uh, PAL version Super Nintendo. Yeah. You just have to point at things. We're not going to have time to pick everything out. So okay. just point at everything and tell us what it is. Uh, uh, Mega SG, um, Super NT. So they're basically hardware. Mega Drive and Super Nintendo or Genesis Super Nintendo emulators. That's a Sega Saturn. That's an Xbox OG Xbox, the Crystal one. That's my Dreamcast games, Sega Saturn games, more Sega Saturn games, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, some PlayStation, including Wing Commander 4, more Saturn games, loads of junk under there, unsorted, um, Wing Commander 4, Big Box PC, Private to the Darkening, Super Star Wars, Super Famicom, um, Cybernator, which is a brilliant sort of mech side-scrolling shooting game. Uh, <laughs> Sega Saturn steering wheel, arcade racer, some arcade sticks, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is, uh, did you did you put that cover on the Xbox? The, the no, translucent no. cover? No, no. This was this is the crystal crystal pack. Yeah, the. Um, it was kind mm-hmm. of a. I think it's the one point six uh, the mm-hmm. model. It's a later edition with the smaller. Mm-hmm. Uh, Remember that uh, time when everything was coming in translucent cases? So nice. Yeah. It's such a nice, yeah. a, nice nineties aesthetic. Although Absolutely. that was obviously to the two thousands, but but yeah. a lot, a lot was like one of the last vestiges of the uh, the translucent case. And you got the matching translucent controller to go with it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that a Duke or is that the smaller one? It's the smaller one, not the Duke. Yeah. There's loads more as well that you can't see that's off camera. There's a Wii U down there. There's my Dreamcast. There's a PlayStation One. Uh, see, uh, and Nintendo sixty four, Jared. Nintendo sixty four nice. there. Sorry. 64 when I got my first credit card and immediately went over limit and destroyed my credit for like 10 years after that that's my that's my lasting memory of the N64 all right thank you Mike thank you for You're being welcome. on the show thanks for thanks for talking uh, VFX uh, to the folks who had to listen to the show sorry for my constant tapping on the thing it like it didn't occur to me until like two minutes before the end of the show that this is probably really annoying with the table mic so really apologize for that happening throughout the show um join us again on isc next week uh isc next week uh we 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 are talking uh, uh looting and selling in alpha 317 uh with with the changes to to loot that are coming and the addition of being able to sell uh, uh, all that loot now that you that you're collecting, and a, and an update on medical gameplay. I look back at uh, how it went, uh, some tweaks and changes that are also coming in Alpha three seventeen, uh, and then a discussion of where we want to take the system after that. That's coming in Star uh, Inside Star Citizen next week, and then uh, SCL. Uh, I actually don't know because we just had to reschedule. I guess they just told me they couldn't make it, so I don't know who's going to be on SCL. But I'm sure it'll be great. Oh, speaking of rescheduling, uh, the EUPU gameplay feature team will be coming back on March 25th. So not next Friday, but the Friday after that. So that show uh, that we had to reschedule from a couple weeks ago is happening on the 25th. Uh, we're using all the same questions that were already pulled and everything. So, so look out for that on the 25th. Um, yeah. So that's that's what I got right now. Uh, that's Mike. Uh, that's me. Um, this is my uh, ever-dwindling uh, office. Uh, this 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 is a copy of Rogue One on VHS. Yes. The yes, best Jared. way to watch the Star Wars movies if you're our generation. And uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Take care. <sighs> I definitely. I don't know what I ate or drank this morning, but I'm probably gonna get an email. Why? What's wrong? <laughs>